Hello everybody, this is Petey from Bergzerk Arcade at bergzerkarcade.com and here we are with another tutorial on NGUI. Uh, today we're going to be working on floating text, so let's go ahead and actually open up Unity. Uh, we'll go ahead and create a new scene. I'm going to go delete that main camera right off the bat because I tend to forget about that until I start getting complications. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll create a new UI tool. I'm going to stick with setting mine on my uh, 2D GUI layer. And I'll go ahead and create that. And then I'm going to go over to the widget tool. And my atlas, it doesn't really matter. Use whatever you want. I'm using the fantasy atlas that comes with it and the fantasy font as well, the normal one. I'm going to create a label. Then I'm just going to go ahead and add it. So here we go. We have it down here. That actually looks pretty good. It's got the black outline, which is something I want. Now, let's go ahead and create a script. I'm going to go in, C sharp. I'm going to call this floating text. And here we'll do floating text. Okay, so the floating text is, the way I'm going to be using it is uh, the combat damage that you see floating above people's head during combat. That's what I want to use it for, but I want it to be generic enough that if I want to use it for something else that needs text above it, uh, maybe some sort of quest point or NPCs, uh, I want to be able to you know just use this prefab as well. But right now, the main thing I'm thinking about is combat damage. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and actually attach it. We'll click, make sure it's there. Great. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to gut the functions that Unity gives me right off the bat. I may need to put them back in, but for now I just want to get rid of them. And I just want to add a few comments on exactly what I want to be able to do here. So I want to be able to change the color. Uh, so for instance, red will be um, when you're taking damage. Green could be when you're healing, and then there could be other colors for maybe you have different damage types. Maybe you want yellow for poison damage, or possibly you know, maybe another color for using this for NPCs. But I don't want to have the colors defined in this class because then every time I want a new color or if colors conflict between projects, then I have to keep changing it. So I want a method that I can just actually send the color into, uh, or just change the color of the display. So I want to be able to change the color great and now when this thing spawns I want it to be able to spawn right above the player so that means I'm gonna to have to be able to uh, send it a position and have it calculate where it needs to be on the screen so spawn at a specific spot on the screen and what are some of the other things I'm gonna to want to be able to pass in a string to be displayed uh, so pass in a string to be displayed. And right now, that's all I can think of off the top of my head. Let me go ahead and we'll take a look here at what we have. Uh, we're going to go ahead and turn off the preview. Uh, that's it for now. So let's actually just go ahead and start making functions for these. So the first one I'm going to do is change the color. And I'm going to want to see... Uh, what commands are available to do those. So I'm actually going to just start them off in start. Uh, so we want to change the color. So in order to change the color of the text, if we come over here and take a look, uh, let me see, we have our floating text. I'm going to want to get access to this UI label script and do color tint, it looks like. So let's go ahead and we'll well, we'll start with that. So I'm going to need a reference to the UI label. So we'll do it just like we did before. So uh, I'll make it public to start off with. Just so we can see that it is grabbing it. Now I'm pretty sure it will. We've done it a few times, it should. But I'm going to make it look like a private variable because I'm going to switch this over after. Now I'm just going to call it LDL. And then we'll come down to awake. And in here, I want to get the reference and assign it. And so we're going to go get component. But the component we want is the UI label. And then I want to do a quick check here just to make sure that I have something. And we're just going to see if it's equal to null. And if it is, we're just going to throw out a little warning message for them. I'm actually going to use log error. Make sure you get that capital D. 
And the air I want to send will be um, could not type, <laughs> could not find the UI label for the floating text. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. We'll just quickly save that, and I'm just gonna start this up. So I'm gonna come over to the console. Oh, we have an error right here. Uh, boom, boom, boom. LBL. Oops. And I'm already making mistakes. And that means I'll have to change this as well. All right, those should go away. Perfect. Let's go ahead. We'll start this up. And I do have a reference. It looks like. Yes, I do. And if we click it, we see it's just it's getting itself. Okay, we know that's working. Switching it back to private. So let's go ahead and uh, change the color. So LBL dot, nope, it's underscore LBL dot. <laughs> and we want to do something with color. And it looks like it's called color tint. Now I have actually played around with this before and I couldn't get access to color tint. And I went through the documentation and I didn't see anything specifically about it. Uh, but I have managed to be able to do it through just its color property. So let's just start off. We're just going to make it color red. So we'll use the constant for that. And we'll go ahead. We'll start it up. And look at that. We've already got it. the command to change the color red. So I'm going to go ahead and actually turn this into its own function. Uh, so public. Uh, actually... Let's make this a getter and setter for it. And I'm going to call it text color because that's what we're coloring. And we'll go ahead and we'll get set. And we'll just return the LBL dot color. And for here, we're just going to have the underscore. All right, so we'll have to test this out with our driver later. Uh, but it looks like it should should be fine. So great, we got that one done. Now let's go up and I'm just actually going to put a space up here in between the ones that we've actually managed to do and the ones we still have left to do. Uh, I'm actually going to do this one next, passing a string to be displayed. So again, I'm going to start and start. And we're going to want to call LBL dot and is there anything for text yep there's a text field and let's set it to well something to test this is a test so we'll go ahead I'm gonna click it um, doesn't really say what this is but anyway I'm gonna see if it's ta text and it, apparently it is because I can access it that way great so I'm gonna go ahead create a function for that so public, and I think I'll actually do, well, I don't think I'll actually ever need to get the values, but I might later on down the road. So I'm just going to do the exact same thing with the getter and setter. So I might as well just copy this and paste it in here. And of course, we'll have to change this to a string. And we'll just do text here. And I'm just going to leave it as text. And one more change here. All right, so that should be fine. That's two of them done. So I'm going to move that up here. And the next one is we want it to spawn at a specific spot on the screen. Actually, let's fix this typo and it looks like we're coming up on 10 minutes. I like to keep these really short. So we'll go ahead and save the positioning for the next video. Uh, if you have anything else that you can think of that we actually want to add to the this script while we're still working on it, go ahead and leave the comments down below and uh, maybe I'll actually get this one uploaded before I actually start the next one and we can implement those. But anyway, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. Before we go, let's actually save this off as a scene. And we'll put it in our scenes folder. And I'm just going to call it floating text. And quickly add it to our menu before we go. Um, so it'll be under scenes, uh, main menu. Uh, 
I didn't actually put this in the script folder, which I should have. Quickly load up main menu. Um, some errors there, but anyway, we've got it loaded. And I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, so we have a floating vital bar. We're actually going to need... Well, we'll add this to the next one. So like I said, I like to keep these under 10 minutes. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.